Watkins Glen makes track changes ahead of this weekend's NASCAR races, plus an update on where NASCAR Cup Series Silly Season currently stands. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. The NASCAR series are headed to Watkins Glen this weekend. You have the ARCA race on Friday night. If you want to watch Connor Zillich dominate that, go ahead and tune in for that. The Xfinity series, the penultimate race of their regular season, happens on Saturday. And the second race in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs happens on Sunday in the Finger Lake region. There is actually more to New York than just New York City, contrary to what Marshawn Lynch thought when he got drafted by the Bills, got off the plane and said, this is not New York City. No, it's not. In fact, there's an entire state that's not New York City. But the Cup series will be in Watkins Glen this weekend, and Watkins Glen made some track changes ahead of this weekend's races. Watkins Glen, of course, is owned by NASCAR through their International Speedway Corporation, ISC, and after last year's race, it was clear that something had to be done with the bus stop area after Kyle Larson posted the data from the mouth recorder that he was wearing. Essentially, he has a mouth guard in that had sensors in it to uh, measure the amount of G-force his body was feeling, and going through that bus stop area, you're talking about an 11 to 14 G hit every single time he went through there. Like, his head's getting pummeled by Francis and Ganu. I know nothing about UFC, so that's not the right comparison. My apologies to everybody in the comments. Give me a better reference point at that. But the amount of pressure that his head was taking, the hits that he was taking, just wasn't good. I mean, it wasn't Tua, but it, not something that you should be sustaining over and over and over again for the course of 90 laps. So NASCAR looked at the data, and while it is really impressive to watch a NASCAR Cup Series stock car and the change of direction going through the bus stop, specifically in the video here where you see Kyle Larson moving through there um, at an absolutely rapid speed and seeing the car change direction that quickly, massively impressive just not healthy for the human body. So NASCAR and Watkins Glen went ahead and removed those yellow and red curbing that was there. They paved from basically the tra the edge of the track all the way up to the Armco in that area. They added in some recessed, um, I don't want to call them curves, they're just recessed rumble strips essentially there on the, on the left side of it, the side closest to the track. They are able to put uh, curbs on there. Uh, turtles, we saw back in the springtime, uh, some pictures came out where we're talking about basically iPhone height level of of um, curbing that was in there. That is not in play for this weekend's races for the Cup Series. And then they added in some very minor curbing uh, up against the Armco right there. But it should take out that dramatic jump and land section. That essentially was what Larson and others were feeling last year. That's a good move all around. They're, obviously, if they would have left that big curbing in that we saw back in the springtime, you're talking about really having to slow down to get into that bus stop area, and maybe that's something that could have, should have been looked at. Uh, it would have definitely slowed cars down. I don't think it creates for a bigger passing opportunity than what they currently have there. Um, but it would have caused a lot of damage to race cars. So I'm not upset with the way that they're doing this now, but it should uh, alleviate some of the pressure and some of those hits that drivers were feeling in their head there. Other changes that were made to the track on the exit of turn one, which traditionally, uh, as you can see in this picture, everybody goes completely to the uh, left side of the curb off track. That's not the track. Everybody just treats it as it is track. NASCAR does not have track limits. Well, the track did install rumble strips in that area. You know, the type that when you hit them on the highway, you immediately apologize to everybody in the car, even though you didn't mean to and you only hit it for half a second. Yeah, that, but just on steroids to deter drivers from going super wide right there and running into that runoff area. Will that deter them in a late race restart type of situation? Uh, potentially not. I'll have to wait and see. I think we all will to, you know, just how disruptive they are to the cars, but they should be rather substantial in terms of the amount of bumping and brrr noise that you get. You're welcome for the sound effects. Uh, they also went ahead and added those uh, rumble strips uh, on the exit of the carousel turn as well. You know, um, traditionally you come to the bus stop, go through the carousel, down that uh, straightaway, down into what the second to last corner of the racetrack. In that runoff area, they also added them there. Uh, traditionally, it goes off towards the boot. Drivers tend to run wide through there. They have added those rumble strips there as well. Again, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that is definitely something to help sort of control track limits and keep drivers on the racetrack and so that they don't go super wide right there uh, and put themselves in a precarious situation. There's also a safer barrier added on the exit of turn one on the arm code to the left side uh, of the drivers on the track there. Again, just another safety improvement, which is probably for the best. So we'll have to wait and see how these changes will affect the cars, but 
But for now, I think there's steps in the right direction. Also, if you like the content that you see in video form on YouTube and TikTok, you might be interested in seeing what I have in written form. I do have a blog up and running now. You can check the link in the bio as well. Uh, it's on Substack. You don't have to pledge any money. It's free. Don't pay attention if you get a little pop up that asks you about that. But yeah, read it. Check it out. I'm planning on posting a couple times a week. Uh, just another outlet for for my brain. All right, moving on to NASCAR Cup Series. Silly season. Through silly season so far, in terms of me telling you where people are going, batting a thousand. Have had great information. Shout out to everybody that helps me out on that side of things. But some people are still skeptical, right? I'm not Jordan Bianchi. I'm not Jeff Gluck. I'm not Bob Pockers. I understand that. I'm a guy that runs a Twitter account, TikTok, and YouTube. Uh, but I do get good information. And it's nice to see some people recognize that. Unlike this guy right here, Captain Alex, who is just not a fan of mine whatsoever. He probably needs to leave the house sometimes. to get off the internet, just relax, take a deep breath and hope things get better for him. But yeah, so Jordan Bianchi went ahead and talked about Silly Season on Thursday, and people like Jordan Bianchi, so we'll talk about that, even though a lot of it's what I've been talking about already. So starting off with the call number 31, Daniel Hemrick is not expected back in that car. I've said that before. Who's going to get in that car? I haven't heard any names, mainly because I haven't checked in to find out. But it does appear that Ty Dillon is the favorite to land in that car. He's become like the Casey Mears of NASCAR at this point. Just a guy that's getting decent rides and nobody wants to give up on him, even though we probably should have given up on him at this point. Ty Dillon probably does bring a decent bit of funding with him, or at least we'll be able to help find funding. But he's not a guy that's going to win you races. He's not a guy that's going to get you top 10s more than likely. He's a guy that can get you some top 20s. That's certainly in play here. As Jordan points out, he's got three top 20s in his six starts, uh, in his last six starts in the Cup Series, which is great, I guess, um, but certainly not something I think you maybe want to build a career off of. It's like being like, hey, Corey LaJoy, uh, it certainly doesn't hurt that he finished in the top 10 at the Southern 500. Well, that was his first top 10 ever on a non drafting track, and not to for Corey to catch a ricochet shot right there, but that really can't be something to be like, hey, I should get a Cup ride. Why? Well, I finished in the top 10 one time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, John King won a truck series race at Daytona and nobody ever heard from him ever again. But Ty Dillon going over to Colleg seems like it might be in play right there. Colleg has had talks with Ty Dillon before uh, and just never really got across the finish line. They seem to value Ty Dillon the same way that John Gruden seemed to really value Nathan Peterman. I think all of us are sitting on the outside being like, that's not a guy that's going to do much for you, but hey, not my money. So go ahead and give it a shot there. So Ty Dillon, maybe to Colleg, seems like his name is a favorite over there. On the topic of Zane Smith, I've been talking for a while that Zane Smith is headed to FRM. I've been told, it still expect to see Zane Smith over at FRM. Jordan Bianchi in the Athletic Post did say that he expects Zane Smith to be at Front Row Motorsports next year after getting released from Trackhouse, pending you know sponsorship coming together over there. Of course, there was a, talk, a lot of talk about Ford potentially blocking the move from Zane to go over there. That only really came from Kevin Harvick, who also happens to own a management company, who also happens to have drivers looking for seats in the Cup Series. So maybe there was a bit of an ulterior motive there. I'm not here to say if there was or there wasn't, but certainly is the only person that was talking about that, but still expect Zane Smith to land over at Front Row Motorsports. The number seven car at Spire is the most talked about car in silly season currently and will be until they actually do announce a driver over there. Of course, there's been a ton of rumors surrounding that car, and a lot of things have been said about that car which have tracked with everything that we've we've heard. Justin Haley, still probably the favorite to land in that car. I only say probably because of the rumors that were swirling. He is the guy that's going to be in that seven car, barring something else crazy happening. Uh, so a bunch of owners apparently are high on, on Justin Haley, including the guys over at Hendrick Motorsports. So expect Justin Haley to be in that seven car in 2025. Barring something dramatic happening, um, but he does appear to be headed back to the team where he got them their first ever cup win, his first ever cup win, and he's going to be paired up with Rodney Childers, which should certainly be a good thing. And last but not least, the Ryan Priest gang. There's a lot of them out there, and they are diehards, and they want to know where Ryan Priest is going, and I respect the fact that he's got a lot of fans. He, of course, is the favorite to land in the third RFK Racing car in 2025, obviously with that Kroger sponsorship. He has a strong relationship with Kroger. Uh, RFK believes that that he has not yet had an opportunity to show his true potential in the Cup Series. I think that might be up for a debate uh, just a little bit here when you compare his numbers to what his teammates have done at Stuart Haas Racing. He's definitely on the lower end of that compared to his teammates, but 
If they believe in him, maybe they can turn him into a winner. Chris Buescher, of course, got that one win with Front Row Motorsports, but then struggled with JTG, went over to Roush, and really took off once Brad took over that team. So maybe this is the same opportunity that Ryan Priest can have as well. Expect him to be in that third RFK car once they finally announce that, and potentially leasing uh, a charter from Rick Ware Racing because if Justin Haley leaves the uh, 15 car, then or 51 car rather, 51 car, then expect... Uh, Corey LaJoy to slide into that seat and then then maybe to run an open car or, or whatever. But the charter will likely come from over there. Unless, of course, NASCAR takes away the charters of 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports on December 31st, and then all chaos ensues and all of this doesn't actually matter. But for now, that's where NASCAR Cup Series Silly Season currently stands. So let me know in the comments what you think about the change of Watkins Glen. Silly Season, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.